Let's look at this book itself and ask, is there anything in this book that indicates its divine origins? And I will say that when Christians and Muslims want to argue with atheists and prove the existence of God, we say that there is design in nature and that design points to a designer. Moreover, as Colin Ronan has pointed out in his book, The Universe, there is mathematics behind everything in the universe, the arrangement of stars and planets and galaxies and everything, and that mathematics points to a grand mathematician who put it all together. Now, what if we find that things are arranged in the Quran, despite all of its history and questions regarding manuscripts and changes and different recitations and various caliphs and rulers who uh, officiated and sanctioned certain texts. At the end of it, if we find a design in this text, we have to ask our, questions, our question. Is this design due to any of the human beings who worked on this text, or is this due to the Almighty God? Let me tell you some of the things that we do find. Uh, you may have been given a paper as you came in, actually two papers, one of them entitled The Quran is a Mathematical Miracle, and the other entitled The Number 19 in the Quran, A Sign of Its Divine Origin. I would look at the first paper first. In the first column of the first page, I detail a number of instances where the Quran mentions a word and also a contrasting word, and though these words are in very different places in the Quran, it turns out now, as we can see, that the two words, the one and its contrast, are used an equal number of times. For example, hot and cold are used in the Quran four times each. Man and woman, 24 times each. The Quran in Surah 3, verse number 59, says that the example of Jesus with God is like Adam, meaning that God created them both. Now we can see that, in fact, Jesus and Adam are each mentioned 25 times in the Quran. We always speak of uh, the devil and angels in contrast. It turns out that the devil is mentioned, Satan is mentioned 68 times in the Quran, and uh, angels mentioned also 68 times. Now that's if we take the words by themselves. If we take the words with all of their adjuncts and variations, it turns out that there's 88 on one side and also 88 on the other side. So it's balanced again. We contrast this life with the life hereafter. The word for this life in the Quran occurs 115 times and also the word for the life hereafter occurs 115 times. How did this coincidence come about? Are all of these just coincidence, or is this a plan? And was this a plan of human beings? Jay can come back and tell us which human being or which caliph planned this to come out this way, and, and then we'll see if he's right. If Jay doesn't have the answer to this, I'll tell you my answer. From what I know of the Quran and its history, this is evidence of the divine origin of the Quran. We can have an idea that the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, was a preacher inspired by God. He spoke the Quran. He taught his friends and colleagues, his followers. They tried to memorize that Quran. They tried their best to write it down, even with a defective script as they could. They taught it to others orally. The defective script was used as a memory device, because if you hadn't memorized the passage already, you couldn't read the defective script. So the two worked together in harmony, and over the ages, people tried their best to memorize this Quran, to write it down properly, to preserve it, until we have the edition which we are holding in our hands today, and we are finding these mathematical patterns. We have to ask, uh, who put this in there? And we realize that no human being did, and this is the word of God. In a similar vein, uh, I can say that the word for month in the singular occurs in the Quran exactly 12 times. And the word for day in the singular, uh, without any suffixes, occurs in the Quran 365 times. Now, how did that come about? What are the chances that you pick up a book, any book, and find that it uses the word day exactly 365 times. Many of you write essays for school, and your word processor nowadays will count the number of words in the entire essay. But how, how many of you would bother to check how many times did you use a particular word in that essay? Hardly. Now, if you go back in hindsight and you've written a book and you find that 
you've, you've used the word day 365 times, you'll say that's remarkable. It is a coincidence, but nothing more. But if you find that all of these things are, are lining up, how many coincidences are you going to have? Now, this shows that God is behind the Quran. But there is also another argument in the same lines that will show that we have the entire Quran today and that this is not only due to divine intervention to give us this Quran, but divine in intervention to safeguard this Quran so we know that we have the entire book as it is in this particular version. Now, I'm not speaking about the other readings. Muslims do hold, as Jay has pointed out, that there are uh, seven or ten authentic readings. I hold to the idea that there are ten. And there are another four which are not so authentic that can be used in commentary. These readings vary uh, some pronunciation of words. Sometimes they vary the meaning slightly, but they're not contradictory meanings. They expand the meaning of the Quranic text. For example, Jay mentioned the reading of Warsh that is present in North Africa. Most Muslims in the Quran, as, we, as I'm holding it here now, uh, has the standard reading from, from Hafsan Asim, which says that God is the owner of the Day of Judgment. The word owner is pronounced Malik. And in North Africa, they would read it and say that God is the king of the Day of Judgment, and king would be pronounced Malik with a short A. So you see the Malik with a short A or Malik with a long A. To me, this is not a problem. This, in fact, expands the meaning. And rather than burden all of the Muslims with having to learn all of these various readings all at once, so that in, in, in what would have to happen is that the Muslim would have to say, God is the owner of the day of judgment and also its king. So now the Quran becomes longer for each Muslim to memorize and, and to follow. But if some Muslims say that God is the owner of the day of judgment, and some other Muslims say that God is the king of the day of judgment, these are complementary meanings. They learn one, this is sufficient for their salvation. So we have to ask then, is this Quran that we have sufficient for our salvation? And can we have confidence that God is behind this book? Now, for this grand mathematical scheme in the Quran, that assures us that the Quran has been preserved by God as we have it now. In this particular reading, the Egyptian 1924 uh, edition. The Quran, as Jay said, comprises 114 chapters. Each chapter has a number of verses, and there are two numbers that are thus associated with each chapter. The chapter number, from 1 to 114, and the number of verses within the chapter. Now, there is a mathematical relationship between these two numbers. If you add the two numbers together, you either get an even number result or an odd number result. That, that's elementary. You add two numbers together, you either get an even number result or an odd number result. Uh, result. If you do this for the entire Quran, you obviously have 114 results. And some of them are going to be even numbers, some of them are going to be odd numbers. If you did this yourself, you will see to your surprise that exactly half of the results are even numbers and half of them are odd numbers. 57 even numbers, 57 odd numbers. What created this fine balance? To be sure that this is not just a fluke coincidence, I did this with 10 books of the Bible. The five books that make up the Pentateuch, the Torah, uh, the Psalms, and the four Gospels. And I found that in none of these 10 books did this pattern emerge with an even balance between uh, even and odd numbers. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with these books, because there's no reason why a book has to have this. The fact that it has it, though, shows that this, there is some, something unusual about this book. And I would say that this is not a mere coincidence. This occurred in the Quran by divine intervention. Now let's go deeper. Take the 57 even number results and add them all together. You get the grand total of 6,236. Even though this total emerged from only 57 chapters of the Quran, this number, 6,236, is also the number of verses in the entire Quran. So how did that emerge from only 57 chapters? Now, let's look at the odd number results and add them all together. The sum of those 57 odd number results is 6,555. And it turns out that that number 
is the grand total of all of the chapter numbers of the entire Quran, the entire 114 chapter numbers. How did this fine balance occur? So that not only do we have an even number of even and odd results, but the even results total the, the number of verses of the entire Quran, and the odd number results is the total of all of the chapter numbers of the Quran. Again, to make sure that this is not a fluke, I checked it against the 10 books of the Bible I already mentioned, the books of the Torah, the Psalms, and the Gospels, and none of them checked out in this way. Again, nothing wrong with the books on this basis, because there's no reason why a book has to have this, but the fact that the Quran turns out like this assures me that the entire book has been preserved. Now, one step further. If you did this yourself in, let's say, a computer worksheet program, you entered all of the numbers, now you have the results, so you see the numbers matching at the bottom in your totals, you will see that if you put in one verse extra anywhere, or you take out one verse by changing the numbers, just make one number bigger by one or smaller by one, or you change any of the chapters, add a chapter, take away a chapter, the entire system then collapses. And what this means for me is that, to begin with, the system is there in place by God himself. And secondly, this shows that the Quran, the one that I'm referring to, has been preserved and handed down to us over time. So we can be assured that this is the word of God. Now let me take it further. In 1976, a man by the name of Rashad Khalifa published uh, his uh, findings saying that there is a pattern of 19 in the Quran. Things measure up number of times divisible by 19. But it was later on found out that he exaggerated many of his results. And he also exaggerated his own status. But his work created some curiosity. And men, those of us like myself, who are curious enough to extend this study, study the Quran on this basis, we find that indeed there are certain features of the Quran that measure up to 19 or times 19. And 19 is a large number. If you toss a coin, the chances of getting heads is one out of two because there are two faces. If you roll a die, the chances of getting your particular desired face is one out of six because there are six faces which equally equally turn up. The chance of getting, if there are 19 options, the chance of picking the one that you desire out of the 19 is one out of 19 is just a little bit more than 5%. It's almost like you're lining up at the, uh, uh, to, catch your, to board your plane and you're one of 19 persons and you're asking yourself, what is the chance that I'll be picked out for a random search? And if you're a Muslim, probably you get picked out more than one once. <laughs> so if you get picked out again and again, then you have a feeling that the system is not entirely random. And it doesn't mean that you have to be picked out every time. If they picked you three times in a row and then pick you the fourth time, you might think that probably they just want to make it look like it is random after all, so that they don't, you don't have a case to hand over to the Human Rights Tribunal uh, on, on a platter. So there might be another explanation for why it doesn't occur every time. It is the number of times that it does occur that is more than would be expected by random sampling that now gives you the impression that the whole thing is planned. Now, is there such a plan in the Quran? It seems so. In the 74th chapter of the Quran, in the 30th verse, the number 19 is mentioned, and this is said to be the number of angels guarding hell. But then in the very following verse, the 31st verse of that chapter, it, it details why this number was mentioned. And it says that this will give the people of the book certainty, and it will increase the faith of the believers. While at the same time, those who have diseases in their hearts and those who disbelieve will be deriding this information. So there are two responses. One is that it can give us certainty and increase our faith, or somebody might say, oh, that's nothing. Now it's up to you how you're going to respond to this information. But here is what we find. That verse that details the wisdom of the number 19 comprises 19 times 3 words, or 57 words. The words in that chapter prior to this verse are 95 words, or 19 times 5. If we count the words within the first 19 verses of that chapter, they're 19 times 3, or 57 words. If we count the letters coming all the way down to just before, but not including the mention of the number 19, they are 361 letters, which is 19 squared, or 19 times 19. 
Did all of these 19s occur by coincidence near the mention of the number 19? Okay, let's go to Surah 96. Surah 96, the first five verses were said to be the ones first revealed to the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace as he meditated in the cave. Regardless of whether this is the first or not, examine these first five verses. They're made up of 19 words. Count the letters. There are 76 letters, which is 19 times 4. Okay, count the letters in the entire chapter. There are 19 times 15 words or 200 letters or 285 letters in that uh, chapter. The number 285 occurs elsewhere again, repeatedly in the Quran. For example, the 72nd uh, chapter of the Quran has 285 words. And it's interesting that this chapter ends by saying that God has taken into account everything numerically. And the last word is numerically. Now, if we check the last word of every verse in this Quran, and we add up all of the letters, we find that there are 114 letters that make up these last words of every verse. And 114 is 19 times 6, which is also the number of chapters, as you recall, Jay said, of the entire Quran, 114. So how did all of these 19s occur? By mere coincidence? Or is this by a divine plan? Let me proceed. Some... Uh, Chapters of the Quran begin with uh, disjointed letters, the meanings of which nobody knows, but we can only guess. And there are scholarly guesses. The 50th chapter of the Quran begins with the letter Qaf. You might say Q as an equivalent in English. It turns out that if we count the, num the, the number of times the letter Q is used in that chapter, there are 19 times 3 occurrences of the letter Q. Now, there's one other chapter, the 42nd chapter, that has the letter Q as a disjointed letter at the beginning. In that chapter also, the letter Q is used exactly 19 times 3, which is 57. Now, previously I said that there is a relationship between the chapter number and the number of verses within the chapter. It turns out in these two chapters that there is another relationship apart from what we already discussed. Both, in both cases, the chapter number plus the number of verses in the chapter turns out to be 19 times 5 or 95. Is that a coincidence as well? Previously, I mentioned that uh, Jesus and Adam are both mentioned in the Quran exactly 25 times each. And again, I want to emphasize the point that the mention is of these contrasting words are scattered throughout the Quran. So who was doing the counting? Now it turns out that Jesus and Adam are mentioned in Surah 2 and then in Surah 3. In Surah 3, verse number 59, that's where it says that Jesus is like Adam. And from there onwards, the two names do not occur again in the same chapter until they appear again together in the 19th chapter of the Quran. And that is the 19th time Jesus is mentioned and also the 19th time that Adam is mentioned. Now, if we count the verses from the time Adam is mentioned the seventh time, I didn't say that earlier, right? And when, when, they, when it is said that they... One is like the other. That is the seventh time that they are mentioned. In Surah 3, verse number 59. If we count from that seventh mention of Adam up until the 19th mention, we will see that there are 1,957 verses, which is 19 times 103. And if we count the times that Jesus is mentioned, like for the first 19 times, if we add up all of the verse numbers, we see that the sum of those verse numbers is also 1,957, which is 19 times 103. So how did all of this coincidence come about? Is this by some human intervention? Some caliph? Uh, uh, tell us, Jay. If not, then I will say, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the word of God. And these coincidences were put in the Quran so that when we study it today in the age of doubt and uncertainty and skepticism and agnosticism, agnosticism and when atheism is on the rise, Muslim can hold, Muslims can hold up the Quran today and say, this book is the word of God.